So now we talked about where where are we at with time? We talked about auditing. We're talking about Google Analytics setup. I'm just going to get a little bit into Google Tag Manager and the data layer. So who here knows what a data layer is? Show of hands. All right. All right, Heather, yeah, well, you get the goals. <laughs> Heather, I would love to hear a non-analytics person explain it. And you can't, I mean, you know, I don't want to, like, we're going to be together for four days here. Like, I don't want to do all the talking, please, everybody. Heather, I would love to hear you at least know what you know of it. No I mean, are you open to that? Well, my understanding, it's the um, what goes into your tag manager, right? It's that data layer that goes into your the JavaScript. My understanding is that. So um, it just truncates your data sets, right? Yes, yes. It actually makes it easier to collect. Um, and so let's back up a second here and talk a little bit. Who knows what Google Tag Manager is? All right, killer. Okay. Daniel, can you tell me what you it define in your words what Google Tag Manager is? Uh, can you hear me first and foremost? I can. Okay. So the Google Tag Manager is um, a kind of a one-stop shop where you can take all of your pixels and tags from your different sources that you want to fire on any given page you put them in the tag manager and then you connect the tag manager to the website and or the web page um, accordingly and <clears throat> uh, it will fire those different pixels and tags uh, depending on whether you you have them turned on or not um, one side note i don't use tag manager and i also don't recommend tag manager because it uh, is a substantial performance impairment. <laughs> um, it really, really slows down the, the uh, CWV of the page, but um, it is a really fantastic resource were it not for that. Interesting, yes. I mean, I think there are pros and cons for both. I like Tag Manager and most companies use it because it alleviates the dev team from yeah. having to write your tags. And that is the main benefit. So think of it as, and you're right. I mean, if you've got a, there is a, there is a performance component and there are ways that developers can support it. Um, what we find most often is that our clients don't actually have many uh, developer resources available to them, or if they do, to get a tag in, you got to get in line behind performance, building shit, pardon my French, <laughs> a feature, something a CMO wants on the page, and that tag, Jess will know this, but it will take months to get up there. And so the tag manager allows us to create all of these tags. So like, here are all the my Google Analytics for events. So you could see like how crazy my head is. Like, I'm like, I want to know call to actions. I want to know beta navigation. I want to know form submit. I want to know if they clicked on my demo deck. I want to know if there was a login error. Did they interact with social? So like my shit's crazy, right? You <laughs> so willing to you... share a screenshot of all of those tags? Because that's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact... I might just give you the container. I want to give you, you know what, Joe, I'm going to give this group the container nice. so that they can see. So you could see like, these are the things that I'm looking for here. I want, these are my event parameters that we've set up. We do, we, Hey, we, we started out doing event category when GA4 came out, we didn't really understand. So, you know, if our company was like setting up event category, uh, my, what the social action was, what did they click on what the click label is? 
you don't even worry about it. Cobbler's children have no shoes. But if I were to take this back to my team, I would say, what was the social platform? What blog were they on when they shared? Those are some other event parameters. Go ahead, Heather. Um, I have a question on the setup of this. So um, when we do tags, of course, the events, are they automatically sniffed as far as, or do you have to do something in the code, the, uh, the front end HTML? This is where the data layer comes in. So, um, so the answer is Heather, it's a cocktail. We like okay. cocktails on Monday morning. Um, what you ought to do is there are some auto event variables. So remember like in your checklist, checklist here, Turn on okay. the enhanced tracking, except for forms. Those are automatically sniffed. Okay. Things like the form, things like, whoop, things like navigation will have to be given okay. to a developer for data layer work. Okay. Now, let me pull that up for you. So you have access to this as well. This should be actually, Joe, if you could help me, um, if we don't have the data layer in here. We should be adding it. Oh, core data layer guide. That's in your your in your training material. I put, I put it as a PDF so everyone should be able to access it, but let me know if you have any issues. We'll follow up if not. So everything that you see here, comprehensive tagging and data layer guide. This you could just turn it over directly to your client's developer if you need to, or your developer if you're lucky enough to have one. And that all those things that are not automatically tracked by Google Analytics is in here. Okay. Navigation click, call to action, content accordions, um, anything that I ever thought of that we might want to know is in here. So you can click over to this and say, all right, this is the, uh, or let's just take a, let's take a look at a, the form submission. So this is how we actually recommend form submission. The developer has to push a data layer event, form underscore submit, and a parameter that we're asking for, which is form name. When that is surfaced in the data layer, meaning it is surfaced in the browser, not only can Google, Anal Google Tag Manager grab it, Facebook can grab it, Pinterest can grab it. You could create a trigger based on this thing for every media event. So sometimes we go to the client, we're just like, okay, here's your data layer. And there's like, what the hell? You just gave me 68 pages of instruction. Why are we doing this? The value is in the documentation so that we know how this is fired. When a form is submitted, we know exactly what it's supposed to do. And B, everything that we built here is usable across marketing platforms. So when you're justifying like, hey, first of all, you guys wanted to do the documentation. You got it right here. Just send it over. Just swap it out. Put it in your branding. Honestly, this is what this is about. Me empowering you guys to do this. Swap it out. Copy and paste it into your branding. Give it to them. And the explanation and the value proposition is you do the data layer. It's going to ensure that the data is clean, not going only into GA, but also going into any of your other marketing tech stacks. So, um, so that to answer your question, Heather, it is a combination of 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 data layer plus automated tracking from Google Analytics, and this is where the documentation comes into play. So, when you say, "Hey, client, I did it. I architected this for you. I architected the unstructured data set, and this is the blueprint." So now what we're getting into is this is really the, the main thing that the client sees is what's my event? What is this recording? I also have sometimes the clients, like if developers can't really do all of the tagging at the same time, here's a priority status. Is this considered custom? Is this considered a conversion event? And then does this replicate anything that we had in GA3? I'm going to talk about the trigger. Heather has her hand up. So this uh, this schema right here is like a recipe you hand out to the client to do the integration. Is that right? Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Right, thank you. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you've got, you know, you're going to say, I've, I've done my UX audit. I've seen these are all of the things that we want to track. Um, this is what you're currently tracking in here. That's going to inform what my parameters are going to be. And then this is all of the documentation. So a cool. couple things about event name. Um, Google syntax seems to prefer object underscore action. So think of it as phone link underscore view, phone link underscore click, modal underscore view, modal underscore close. And so think of like event names as a syntax. This is kind of how the industry is starting to set up the tagging. That said, it is a wild west out there. Some of you might have seen some crazy stuff happening. We just saw a website that clearly has an add to cart that had no add to cart function, no data. So you're going to see a lot of ways that clients like maybe have done it themselves and not in accordance to industry standards. Um, I mean, you guys know what it's like when you see campaign reports that are all jumbled up taxonomy, right? You've seen like trying to, People are like, oh, this, name it this day and this date. Who who named it? Oh, an intern. Oh, shit. <laughs> right? So same thing will go for this taxonomy in Google Analytics. We've got to be real clear about how we, so I, I, I recommend, and the way that the experts are doing it is object underscore action. And then with the custom parameters, again, world's your oyster. You're going to be able to get this out, and we're going to go through that on day, day three. Um, so bo boiling, like br bringing it all together, typically what happens before when we get to this point and you say, okay, client, I think these are all of the things that you're going to want to know. Um, oh, sorry. We got to talk about triggers. We got to talk about triggers for a second. A trigger means when does the state of fire? So um, back to fully answer your question, Heather, here's a CTA click. Records when a user clicks any CTA. The trigger is inside the custom CSS. So we are uh, going to try to find, we're, like, here's an example. We made this recommendation um, for a, what did I say, a call to action. A call to action says, hey, if you have to make this custom CSS inside the A tag. It's going to be data click category equals phone. And as a result, I'll be able to pick that up in Google Tag Manager. In the event that they can't create that custom CSS, sometimes like or file uh, fire when click class contains element or button link. This is not ideal. So like what we're saying here, and so sorry, if Rate like anybody just jump in if you're going to start to get lost. So real quick on the CSS, it's because we're applying it to the global uh, strategy or the global website. Is that correct? Exactly. Otherwise, what will have to happen from Tag Manager or any tagging standpoint, even if you're not doing a Tag Manager, you're like, okay, here's a here's a call to action called Invest Now. Let me go investigate what 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 that is. Oh, it's it's even like a it's a start engine. Okay, so I can't even do that. Um, let's take a look at some other CSS. Let's like let's take a look at this guy. Like if you don't have a global thing for say like that search icon, um, then I'm gonna have to specifically try to find each individual one um, inside my templates. It makes it a lot easier. Oh, I can't even. All right, somebody go call these people. Some one one of you go get go get. Go get baby quick. I just tried to I just tried to click on there and it isn't actually a category page. Okay, here's another here's another one. Learn more party rentals. So these triggers could be added to the CSS if it's a global element that we need to be tracking, right? Is that accurate? Correct. So we can truncate. That, okay, cool. Thank you. That is accurate. So for example, like if you want, I want to know when people click on a navigation, if you wanted to create that, you would just have to go. Okay, I'm gonna do click classes, menu item name, and then you have to create a tag for every single one. And then when somebody changes from our story to about us, all your tags are broken. 
So that is the reason why you want to use the data layer event um, whenever possible. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck to what I like to call dirty tagging, when you're just trying to find, you know, but BTNs and buttons inside the CSS and then try to, you know, you, things will get missed if you do it that way. Um, then, you know, it also in here, we say your custom data layer event. If I say navigation view, filter view form submit, we're going to trigger that on a custom data layer event. How? Go back to your custom data layer documentation client. Um, and then in some cases here, like these are just phone link clicks. Some of these are easily identifiable. Some of them are a little bit more uh, cut and dry, like a telephone number. Um, and then in some cases, some of these will be an integration with another tool. Like say there you have intercom installed, that was already sending data. So then this becomes like the master view of everything that's tracked in GA, how it's tracked. You guys ever come across like a, a um, even in GA3, like an event, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's our success event. That's our KPI. We're like, how's it get in there? I don't know. Clients don't know sometimes. They don't know how the data gets in there and somebody has to debug it. So this is the map and this in itself, the typical work that we would charge for this is $5,000. The typical work that another bigger agency would charge for this is 10. Like if you're from like a Dentsu, a Cardinal Path, a Bounteous, but these types of deliverables are like 10 and more, $10,000 and more. 